I want to get you over on this phone as soon as I can. Um, come on in, everybody. Come on in, sit down, please. Hello, everybody. Come on in. Come on in. Oh, I'm sitting on my glasses. That ain't good. Hey, would you mind getting those black glasses in there? In that one. On the, in the kitchen. Uh, well, hey, you got some? Oh, okay. I'm going to get on you. I feel like I'm, like, down in the, like, um, down in the hole. I need to sit up a little bit. Yeah, I need a pillow behind me. Sorry, y'all. We're getting all situated. When you get older, you know how things are. Yes. Huh? Yes. Hey, give me one of those big pillows from in there. I, I need a big pillow. Hey, everybody. I got some things to share. And I'm um, going to sing. Got Kirby Gant coming on here tonight. Tomorrow night, I've asked Chris Sorensen to come on here. He enlightened us really big time. Oh, this is what I need. Yes. The big pillow. Uh, early on, and he hasn't been on here in a while. And so Chris Sorensen's going to be back on here. You know, he's the one that told us about the EVT cards. He told us all about the, um, uh, you know, how everybody's got, when they get there, they have to go down and ask to be on and tell them that they're homeless. And all. He, he was just a wealth of information. So we're going to have him come back on. Do you see that? Let me see, make sure it's on my other page. Just want to make sure right now. Right now. Hey, let me share it to my other page, and then we'll get going, okay? Hello, Gary, Indiana. Lord. I don't want to be on my other page twice. I might have put on there twice. It's not going to hurt anything. Praise the Lord. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you this phone in just a moment when we get started. Once, once Kirby gets on here. Um, I want to say a few things before I get started. Every day. I'm telling you, every day, um, God is just, just doing some amazing things. Now, I know um, today we got the news that, thank God, that Destiny Image dropped David E. Taylor and JMMI from their publishing. Now, you're going to hear, and that's probably why David E. Taylor is going live tonight, to rejoice that somebody had a dream that they're no, no, they're no longer going to be, you know, that they're going to drop them. So, you know, they always have dreams, you know. They only get three hours of sleep, so I don't know how they're dreaming so much. Anyway, uh, I think I'll bring, sit on this, bring me up high a little bit more, yeah. And so, so thank God, Disney Image, we thank you for standing for righteousness. Uh, you, I didn't even have to contact you. I, in fact, I'm not contacting anybody. It's like they're calling me and saying, Vicki, wow, thank you for standing up for righteousness. And we thank you, Destiny Image. And we know that David E. Taylor is going to tell everybody that, you know, he wanted out of the deal. And this is just a God thing. Listen, we know. We know. While you're up, I'm going to try, y'all. There we go. Um, but we know. We know that God is doing this. God is exposing him. And I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing until until I, I want to say a uh, quickly um god is, oh, has opened a major platform for us we still haven't got the details to expose david e taylor and the jmmi cult on a national level um i can't tell you everything about it but i'm very 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 excited the particular platform that i prayed for that would open up for us and it looks like it's going to open up i still don't have the details when i get the details i have no problem sharing it with the world but right now i've got to keep silent but god is exposing this person it's just a quick recap before i sing a little bit of worship uh, december 22nd i went live on my facebook page and i um confessed to a 16 month sexual relationship with cult leader david e taylor jm and my cult in taylor michigan uh, because two women came forward, but since then, over 42 women have inboxed me, reached out to me, and said they are either they're in a, uh, you know, he's inboxing them, telling them that they're his, that he's going to be their husband, they're going to be his wife, they're his, you know, they need a king. Um, some, uh, many are having relationships with him. They think that that he's going to marry them. They think that he's going to marry them in time. Some of these women have been with him for five years, for four years, for three years, for two years. Thank God I was with him for 16 months, and I honestly thought I was the only one. Uh, he bought me a Jaguar for a coat, red bottom shoes for Christmas. Um, we were in a relationship. He met my children. Um, in fact, I told him, "Don't if we're not going to be a long term, I'm not. You're not going to meet my children." But he assured me that it was going to be long term. He met my children. As many of you know, uh, 
after that confession that I made, he went live and tried to discredit me and said that I was on drugs and that I had a cussing problem. And I ate barbecue chicken and one of his staff's card. I wiped the sauce on the ceiling and I threw the bones on the floor. I mean, they're just trying to discredit me, which was, was crazy. And um, denied that he was ever with me in a relationship for 16 months. I had pictures, everything. So, um, the rest is history. Women are inboxing me every day. Let's see, that was about 31 days ago now. Close to 42 women. Actually, more than 42 women uh, have come forward. He has a women's conference coming up. Uh, I posted pictures on my Facebook of his women's conference last year. They married Jesus, and they're all laying on the floor on the platform, all these women. He's walking in between. There's no cloths on any of them, and they're marrying Jesus. Uh, but he's sleeping with his spiritual daughters. I was considered one of his spiritual daughters. I came to him when I was distressed, going through a social media issue, been divorced. He caught me in a very low moment. Um, that's what he does with all these women. And we are sounding the alarm. I'm not stopping. Um, I'm going to get some help from some national, uh, a national program, and I'm going to go on a lot of programs. I'm not going away. I know he wishes I would go away. Go away. He told me one time, he said, Vicki, why don't you go your way and I'll go mine, in my NES. And I said, no, 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 that's not going to work. You, 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 you need to be stopped. He's been doing this for 18 years. 18 years he's been doing this. And let me tell you something. Enough is enough. The gig is up. You have destroyed marriages. You would not believe the marriages. Since I've been talking about coming out with this, at least 10 to 12 people have said he's destroyed my marriage. He, that is his, that is his goal. If he sees a woman with another man in his, in his, in his ministry, uh, marriages are destroyed. See Ola, see Ola from, from when I was in the movement, a beautiful lady from Detroit gave him a hundred thousand dollars out of her, out her 401k uh, account. Her, 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 her sister is, is grieving. She won't listen to nobody. I know he getting there by one other lady over there. She just gave him a million dollars. So he's, 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 he's robbing these women of their money. And then guess what? When he's done with them, he's going to let them go. And that's what happened. One woman right now, um, one woman right now, uh, he said he's going to marry her, gave up 11 years of alimony, 11 years because she's going to marry him. He has totally, totally, totally um, took advantage of his position as a man of God, a man of the cloth, and he reaches out to women through social media, through uh, instant messenger, messenger on Facebook, and let me tell you something, you do not find your spiritual father through social media or through in, in, uh, inbox messenger. That's what he does. He reaches out to women and says, listen, I love you. I want you to be my wife. I mean, come on. You need to marry a king. And they see who he is and see what, and they, they get all, all, you know, uh, excited. And before you know it, they're sucked in. And some of these women have been with them for five years, three years, and it's got to stop. And so, um, I'm the, I'm going I'm to say I'm the, I'm the sacrificial lamb, okay? Because a lot of these women, they don't have the platform I have. And he takes pictures of everybody. I'm just going to tell you, he takes pictures of everybody in the beginning. You've got to send him new pictures. He wants new pictures. He pressures you, new pictures. And then what he does, he says, listen, if you go uh, vocal on me and you talk about me and you, you, uh, you, you're a traitor, I'm going to send those pictures out. And so for me, you know, I don't want to do that. But I'm not going to keep my mouth shut. If he does it, so be it. I'll be the sacrificial lamb. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll give up whatever, my dignity, uh, because I want women to be set free. So I didn't keep that. I didn't keep that, uh, oh, well, I'm just afraid. Oh, God, I'm, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. No, because he's done it for 18 years. Some of you are just coming in on this. ain't just a woman scorn. A woman, a man, my boyfriend cheated on me. This is a man that's been doing this for 18 years. Since I've come out, did you know that women from St. Louis, Missouri, from 10 years ago, they didn't have social media like this to speak out. There are 60 names of 60 women. We have 60 names of 60 women in St. Louis from 10 years ago. Some of you in, 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 at JMMI right now, you need to open your eyes before this goes. It's about to go national. It's about to hit the fan. It's already hit the fan, but it's about to go to another level. If I were you, I would distance yourself from this man. Don't. Don't turn a blind eye. You see the pictures of me and him. You see the pictures of me and him on FaceTime. You, you see, we're to, that wasn't photoshopped. You know, he's telling everybody that I photoshopped those pictures of us. Four or five pictures of us in restaurants, different outfits. Listen, if that's Photoshop, guess what? I need to go into business because I'm a good Photoshopper. I'm telling you. 
So, you know what? We're sounding the alarm. I know some of you maybe get tired of what I'm saying on Facebook. You can unfriend me. You can block me. That's okay. But I'm going to continue to sound the alarm. Listen, some I asked myself. For the first time. Yes, some are hearing this for the first time. Let me just tell you something right now. I'm not going anywhere. I know my assignment. People inbox me, they could go on, go on. No, 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 no. See, some of you pastors, you knew about this this man 18, 15, 14, 13 years ago, and you're not you're not saying anything. You you've let it you you I don't know if you've got something in your closet, but you're not saying anything about you never say anything about this man. But I'm gonna use my platform. So many of these women are scared to death because he says when you do this, you're gonna die of cancer. It's witchcraft. He's a warlock, he's a, a cult leader, it's witchcraft. These people, y'all that work for him, they, they only get like three hours of sleep a night. I mean, they don't get sleep. And I don't understand how they're dreaming all these dreams. Let me tell you something. They dream a lot in just three hours. I'm telling you, they, they, they're always dreaming. I know most of them are made up. David makes up dreams. But um, I just want you guys to know that if you're, you know, I, I'm, I'm sounding the alarm. They have a lady that I used to interview her when I was a part of the movement. Her name is Victoria. And she put a post today or the other day. And it's just, it's, it's, it's appalling. Uh, these people claim to follow, to see Jesus. She claims that she has seen Jesus 17 times, okay? 717, 17 times. And here's the post she made about me. Now, now she's supposed to de uh, denounce Hinduism, but she has not. Here's what she said. She claims, okay, she says she is, um, of course, she's one of David's girls. She says that uh, she, they are going to, to put Hindu demons at my windows at night. And the, la the lady says also, when she doesn't, if she's not sleeping in her car, David puts her in a hotel sometimes. Otherwise, she's sleeping in her car. That's how he treats his, his, some of his women. And then she, her post says, Earth will crown me as the last day eyelash warrior. Hey, Jesus said rejoice. He didn't say at whose expense. I'm still waiting for that part to unfold in Revelation. Anyway, she's, she's a nutcase anyway. And they didn't, in fact... Michelle and David told me she's a nutcase, so that's funny. So keep defending them, but he, they told me you're crazy. Um, yeah, it's unbelievable, and it's going to stop. You know, I was telling somebody that this is the biggest sex scandal in history, in the church and out of the church. When it hits the fan, when it goes national, R. Kelly's story is going to be... I mean, it's a big story, and those women were... I, I, it, I'm, it's, it's, it's horrific. It's all horrific, but this is... Un, this is a whole nother level what this guy has done with all for years 18 years y'all how can he get by with this for 18 years shame on you men of god shame of you on you pastors that knew that this man was doing this to women shame on you it's a disgrace i can't believe that pastors weren't was not sounding the alarm and waking up people yes we need your nephew to come home we have got to do this. Every night, Monday through Friday, I'm on here. I'm sounding the alarm. This has got to stop. I'm past Vicky. Yes, he hurt me. I thought I was in, I thought he loved me. I love for real. When I love, I love with everything. But I'm past. This ain't no woman's scorn. This ain't a woman's scorn at all. Listen, if it was just two women, you wouldn't even hear about me on here. I'm telling you, I don't there's no way I would just be going on like this. But this is an epidemic. This is a this is horrific. And we're sounding them. I need you to share things that I post. You know, I have a, I have an appointment with my attorney. I mean, my attorney uh, may have me st stop a little bit. You know, I don't know. I've got a, we've got some things, some major things happening. You guys ain't gonna believe it. You're gonna be dropping the mic. I'm telling you, some major things happening. So if you see me let up a little bit on Facebook, it's not because I'm retreating. It's because I'm listening to the advice of my lawyers. So um, I just want you to know that I'm, I'm, I'm here. And we're we're going to uh, we're going to see this all to the end. I'm 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 still strong. Every day I'm stronger. You know I'm here with Hank and his wife Amanda here in Kentucky, and it was a great move. I knew I needed to go somewhere where the presence of God was. Not that there wasn't anywhere else, but you know what y'all have been hearing Hank. Hank's amazing. Hank's got an awesome, awesome uh, touch of God on his life. And to wake up in the morning to hear him praying here in the living room in the kitchen and reading the Word of God and just he weeps and it's just it's just an awesome presence here where I'm at. And so. Um, we're not retreating, we're moving forward, and we're excited what God is doing. If you're just joining us late, we're thankful that Destiny Image Publishing Company has dropped David E. Taylor and JMMI. 
Of course, David is on live now, I'm sure, uh, because uh, he wants to tell everybody that somebody had a dream about that, and it happened today. And, uh, you know, they're just excited that they're no longer with uh, Destiny Image, and, you know, that was just a God thing. He's been praying about it, and today, bam, it happened. Hogwash, okay? Um, so I just, just want to thank Destiny Image Publishing for standing up for righteousness. And we need more people. We don't need people going to sing for him. We don't, we don't need people going to preach for him. We don't need nobody. If you stand with him, that means you stand for what he, what he, uh, what he speaks and he is. I will not go to churches or places where I know things are happening. Because when you stand on that platform with that person, that means you okay, you're okay with how they live. And I'm not going to do that. And we're going to stand for righteousness until Jesus comes, okay? So I need, I need strong women. I need strong men and women of God that's not afraid. Listen, you will not die of cancer if you leave JMMI. You will not die of cancer. Listen, I don't know of anybody that died because they left JMMI. I don't know of anybody that died that got cancer. Just because down the road somebody gets cancer or they something happens. It ain't because of David E. Taylor. He has no power. God is greater. That's what's what's wrong with people. We're putting our we're putting our faith in this man that's that has no power. He has no power. He's 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 a, a fraud. He's a fraud, and he's scaring people. People won't even leave the they won't even leave there because they're afraid if they leave there that they will die of cancer. They'll get all because they they drill this in their head. They have a fear based ministry, and. If you, those of you that are in contact with them, you know that if you question them, you're going to get, you know, there's nothing, there's no love. There is no love there. There's no love. They were going to attack you, call you a faggot. It's, it's, it's like for this, for a group of people that their message is face to face with Jesus. They hadn't seen Jesus face in a little while because they're not, there's no attributes. There's no, there's nothing. You feel, you don't feel Jesus when you communicate with those people. And so. We've got to stand for righteousness, and we will continue to do that. I will be on here Monday through Friday, and I'm excited what God is doing. Uh, what I, I think I'm going to um, uh, let uh, Kirby Gant speak, and then when he gets finished, we will. Um, here, you can get on here. When we when he gets finished, we will. Um, I'll sing some. I'll do some worship. Okay, I might sing some songs. You guys give me some requests of some songs you want me to sing. I got them right here on this phone. Uh, but let me get this for Amanda because I want her to. Yeah, okay, it's on, it's on this page. Okay, Kirby, can you just say hello, and then I'll bring, here, uh, Amanda, just say hello, and then I'm going to bring you on, just so I know that you're on here, just say, hey, Vicky, if you can say that, and then I'll, I'm going to add Kirby Gant. I've known Kirby for a long time. Turn that volume down. Kirby, are you on there? Kirby, say hi. I saw him earlier, but I don't want to... Kirby Gant. Yeah, there you go. Um, uh, Kirby, you are you on your phone? Because I don't have a I don't have a, a camera on here, so I can bring you on. I need to make sure you have a uh, are you, you gotta be on your cell phone. If you're on your cell phone, are you on your cell phone? Because I don't have a little everybody that has a little like little green camera where we could bring you on. I don't see that on your name. So let me see. Can you switch to a phone um, or change your setting or something? It's just saying that I can't bring you on. You don't have a green, little green camera. I know. I see him. We're going to wait. We're going to see what, uh, what he's got going on there. Maybe he'll come back on. I'll sing while he's figuring that out. Goes. I love you, Lord. Coming, coming, coming. Yay! Yay! 
Thank you um, for taking a stand and and becoming the voice. Sorry about this, my trying to call me. Uh, this is why I was on my iPad because people, you know, call me all the time. But um, but for coming a voice for so many women, okay, uh, women who probably um, wanted to come forth but could not because, of course. Um, as David told you, you know, he told them the same thing, that they would die, um, you know, from cancer, or that he would ruin them and all this stuff. Um, but thank you because you were willing to become the sacrifice so that, so that these other women may, may live. And when I say live, I mean live as a woman again. Live in the freedom that God um, has given unto them. So many are bound are bound and they have no way out. And sometimes it takes uh, someone uh, who has the balls to say, listen, I have nothing to lose. I have nothing to gain um, in this. And, you know, take a stand for what's right. And that's what you did. And so I commend you. Um, I do. I commend you. There's a little bit of echo. I don't know what it is, but we're going to echo. Okay. I don't know either. I have nothing else on. Okay, just go. Continue. Okay, just go. Continue on. Um, but um, as far as Apostle David is um, concerned, I met David probably, I guess, 10 or 11 years ago, something like that, through um, a mutual friend of mine um, who's actually almost like a godmother to me. Um, she and her husband, they um, are pastors in Atlanta. I met them. Uh, actually, I met him through them. Um, uh, via phone. It was during the time that um, that Zachary Timms had died. Okay, um. and um, <clears throat> he was wanting to. He was wanting to um, go to the morgue uh, to raise him up from the dead. Okay, this is the truth. And because of a connection I had, of course, I was called via phone to try to make it happen, but it did not happen. Okay, needless to say. But anyway, uh, he and I became friends. Uh, he was like a mentor to me. And um, I, you know, just to hear him teach the Word of God, first of all, I think that David is an incredible teacher of the Word of God. And um, several meetings I, I was a part of, or I attended um, the meetings. He actually came to. Uh, my sister's church in Cincinnati, Ohio, he and uh, Apostle Vita Nichols at the time, they were uh, partners in ministry, okay? And uh, <laughs> Apostle Nichols, uh, she had a, um, her and David, they had something they called from Elijah to Elisha. And um, it was a conference, day sessions and night sessions, okay? She would basically teach the day sessions and set the pace for him to come during the night sessions. And they were powerful meetings, no doubt. Okay. Now, I had not yet been, I had not yet gone to uh, JMMI. I call it Jimmy. <laughs> okay. But, um, but anyway, he came to Cincinnati and uh, the services were powerful. Okay, and um, I remember David expressing uh, love for the woman of God. Okay, he told me out of his own mouth that he was in love with her. Hang on, Kirby. We got a okay. problem. We got a problem. Um, do you have your phones? Um, I think I do. Can you 
Can you go get them? Okay. Just a little break. Just a little break. Y'all let me get your headphones if that helps. We're about to get into this We're one. About to get into Click share, 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 share. Kirby was my friend. He's still my friend. David E. Taylor would not allow me to communicate with him during this. And I wish and I wish Kirby could have been like me. Kirby could have been like me. But I got to just say, but I got to just say, all things happen. I got to just try to just trust God that things happen. I got to just say, all 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 things happen. I know it's painful. 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 Okay. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, now how's that? Perfect. All right. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, he expressed to me the love that he had for Apostle Nichols. Okay. And this was, of course, during the time that he and I had our own personal time, man to man talk. And I even remember when after the meeting was over, of course, and I just noticed this, I, I, I noticed different things about him, even like the food that he would eat. Like he was so particular. Like he would only eat lamb, okay? So they had lamb prepared for him every night, um, all three nights of the service. But the last, well, the last day that he was leaving, I was in the car uh, with him, and he and I both sat in the back seat of the BMW. Um, <clears throat> and, um, you know, he began to tell me how he really wanted to marry Apostle Nichols, but he wouldn't because she could not give him more children. Okay, and that he wanted at least two more children. Those were his words to me. But he did love her very, very much. Now, at the time, I did not know anything about any other woman or him, you know, being you know who he was or or, or all the stuff that he had going on. I didn't know. Okay, I didn't see it. No one told me nothing. Only thing I heard about him was that he was a powerful man of God. You know that he was a personal friend of Jesus. Okay. And uh, so on and so forth. So anyway, um, he invited me to come up to the crusade. And I went. This was in, I went to the crusade in August of 2012. Oh. And this is when I found out that David was a total and complete joke. Okay. Um, myself and Apostle Augusto Perez, I wish he was on here because he would tell you. Um, he and I and his wife, we drove all the way. They they came, well, they left Delaware because they really wanted to go to this meeting so bad. They drove, they left in the middle of the night. They left Delaware, drove to North Carolina. That's a 10-hour drive to pick me up. Mm. And from North Carolina, uh, we drove all the way to Detroit, okay? Um, got in a hotel, they wanted me to come. Matter of fact, I have the pictures to prove it because I was... Uh, there, along with uh, Prophet Scott, uh, his best friend, Apostle Charles and Defen, um, the Apostle uh, from Africa who passes a church there in Rhode Island, very awesome man of God, uh, Apostle Nichols, um, and many others. Okay, what I noticed there was a lot of women there, um, and they were all on the front row. And I, I just begin to pick up on state. And I'm looking at the man of God and say, man of God, listen, something right about this. And he's like, listen, I think all of these women are here for, you know, are here for him. Absolutely. And so we are sitting there. Now, this female apostle, let me just stop right here. This female apostle from New York, <clears throat> um, I, I won't call her name, but um, she's from New York. And um, she and I became friends. Uh, through social media, okay, and this was back then, uh, back in the day when I had my little uh, split personality, uh, the Reverend Doctor Saint Paul. I don't know if you remember that that uh, or not, okay. And uh, she actually got me to do a show. Well, I was supposed to do a show on Broadway for um, 
uh, this BET uh, comedian guy, but it all fell through or whatever. And uh, but she was convinced that David was her husband. Okay. At the time, she was engaged to someone else. She cut her engagement off this man because, My you God. know, she said that Jesus, Jesus had appeared to her and told her that David yeah, was her right. husband. And this woman closed her church down and moved out there, okay, moved to Taylor. And I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like, Tanya, he, he's not in love with you. No, he's in love with the woman of God that I know. And so I'm trying to tell her this. She, of course, blocked me on Facebook, shut me down, you know, blocked me, unfriended me, all this kind of stuff, right? They don't want so the truth. By this, as, nope, they don't want the truth. By this time, we are in Taylor, Michigan, August of 2012. For three days and three nights, we are there for the uh, Cancer Against Crusade. And, you know, we're in the back of the... Crusade. You know, <laughs> yeah, Cancer Against... Crusade. Uh, oh, yeah, Crusade Against Cancer, that... <laughs> So, so you know, we're in the room, uh, back in the green room, right? And, you know, we're sitting there amongst all the elites, and they're all talking, you know, we're having lunch, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, the arrogance that was oozing from David was just ridiculous, you know? And the night of the service, David uh, had one of the, the uh, a security men to call me in the back. And he said, hey, man, I got, you know, you all right? I said, I'm, I'm good. He said, you know, you're like my son. And, you know, uh, Jesus told me that I'm to take you with me around the world and, you know, uh, to prepare you for this and all this other kind of stuff. I'm like, okay. So, you know, he opens up this drawer and he gives me a wad of cash. And it was a lot of, it was, I think it was like three, four hundred bucks, whatever it was. I don't know. I can't remember at the time, but he uh, gave me this money. He said, listen, you know, whatever you need, you know, just let me know. I'll take care of it. Blase, blase, blase. So in the service... Vicky, it's about nine o'clock. Church hadn't even started yet, okay? And we're sitting on the front row over to the left side um, of the, uh, facing the stage on the left side up front. Myself, Apostle Perez, his wife, and another friend of ours, I'll tell you about her in a minute, <laughs> okay, who passes a phenomenal church in Detroit right now. We're sitting there, and they are... You know, they are lining up the stage <clears throat> with all of these wheelchairs and canes and and uh, crutches, all this stuff, right? And so I'm looking at the man of God, Apostle Perez. I said, something ain't right about this. You know, so we're yeah. laughing, cracking up laughing, right? So uh, finally, you know, uh, the service was real dry. But when Apostle Nichols got the mic, Oh, my God, it was over. This woman brought in the power, okay? Mm -hmm. So now praise and worship is going forth, right? Praise and worship. This is when I found out that David is a complete joke. Mm -hmm. And uh, praise and worship is going forth. And you know how it is to the right of the stage to have all these curtains, not where the, the studio part is, but the part that he comes out of. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they, right. they have all these curtains up there, and... After praise and worship, then they have the cameras, uh, like they're setting up the cameras, and all of a sudden David comes out, boom, from around, you know, from behind the curtains. Stop, you got me laughing. You're messing my eyelashes up. <laughs> you know, he comes out, you know, from walking behind the curtains like he's uh, Houdini or, or somebody. Hell, I don't know. And... Um, and I'm looking at the man of God, and we are laughing our eyeballs out, okay? Crying laughing. Because I'm like, dude, this is a total joke. And so now he's standing in front of these, what I call props, okay? He has all these canes, all these canes in his hand, you know, or, uh, you know, in his hands, and all these wheelchairs, and boom, they go live. So, of course, with the sound of worship from the people, and the praise, okay, to those who are just now tuning in, it yeah. appears as if all these miracles have just taken place. I never thought of it that way. Props. Okay. Those, those are always there, you know. 
Yeah, and, and props. And he's, you know, with the tears, my God, Jesus is here. He just walked into place. And as you can see, the miracles are happening. I said, well, what the hell is that? You know? And I said, Kirby, okay. But, but Kirby Gantt says hell. H-E-Hop. Yes, I do. That's right. Double, that's right. And uh, I'm like, well, what? like, what's going on? Like, where is the real power? So I'm, <laughs> so I'm like, God, you know what? You got to help me. Because... <laughs> And then the man of God was like, I can't believe, you know, we driven all these miles, you know, for all this right here. So then, you know, we get on, uh, we go over uh, to the studio. Uh, you know, he wanted me to come on the platform with all of the heavy hitters, of course, and then they having prayer. Yeah. First of all, I was not praying. I was too busy laughing because the, the apostle, uh, the pastor from New York, you know, she's being extremely extra. You know, in her praying because she's trying to get the man of God attention. Apostle Victoria Michaels, she's from Africa as well. She pastors a church in Maryland, if she's still pastoring. Um, and, uh, you know, she's leading us in prayer. Okay, and I'm talking to Apostle Michaels. I'm like, now, you know, this is a joke, right? This is a mess. And she was trying to tell me to be quiet, but I just kept talking, you know, because I'm like, you know, at this time now, like, I've lost all respect for you. Because you have thousands in this building and possibly millions, as you say, that are tuned in, you know, from across the country. Okay. Well, we found out. Hey, um, we found out that's not true. Okay. Well, then, so just, maybe hundreds. makes up those numbers. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So uh, whatever it is, all these people are tuned in, you know, watching this, you know, uh, this broadcast of people praying and declaring and he is falsifying miracles okay that did not take place mm. and the truth is when you have someone who has uh who has fixed their lives uh to be as david has you know people believe it because people are so gullible these days and no one is afraid uh to question uh um uh, I mean to say people are afraid, afraid yes. uh, he to question. Gonna die. He tells them they're gonna die. Exactly. And it's a system that he has erected. A system of manipulation, deception, and mind control. Yep. Okay, that that he has erected, and this is how he's been making it all of these years. Okay. Now, what he did to Apostle Nichols was unacceptable and that's when I cut him off. Okay. Yeah. Even though even though I pulled back from him, you know, he, like he would reach out every now and then and then he would even send some of the people. Matter of fact, I got uh, the messages to prove it. Um I believe it's uh Kathy Klein's daughter. Yeah. Uh, one of her daughters, uh Kayla. Yeah. She sent me a message in February of 2018, her and this, uh, this young man named Kevin Mills at two different times trying to give me a prophetic word. <laughs> and both are saying the same thing. I didn't even respond. I'm like, copy and paste. Yeah, copy and paste. Exactly. Copy and paste. And I'm like, David, listen, will you please have your people, you know, to stop uh, uh, sending me, you know, the so called <laughs> word of the Lord? <laughs> you know, just cut it out. Oh you know? My God. Just cut it out. But I told him Pastor Nichols, I said, listen, God will redeem you. Yeah. God's going to give you back your credibility. And God is going to heal you. That's what God is going to do for you. Don't worry about it. We didn't know that it was going to be at this magnitude. We didn't know that God was going to use you. Okay. Um, nobody knew, but God knew. This was written out since the beginning of time. B before the beginning of time, this was written out. God knew the path that David would take, you know, could he possibly be used by God? Absolutely. The Bible even speaks about how God used an ass. Okay. So, hey, God uses those who will avail themselves unto him, regardless of the issues. God simply wants to carry out his will, his purpose, and his mandate Okay, so that souls can be saved. Yes. But it's a shame, it's a shame that he has abused countless of women hundreds, in the process. Hundreds, hundreds, Kirby, it's hundreds. 
When you, Vicky, when I saw last year that you were going, I started reaching out to you. And I said, well, why Vicky ain't responding back to me? I said, I guarantee you. He told her, don't talk to Kirby because he's a traitor. Yeah, but that's what I already knew. Saying, Kirby. What I was thinking, traitor, was that you don't believe in the face-to-face and you can't see Jesus and live. That's how he made me. He, he never said, I understand what traitor, when, when, when David tells you that someone, his enemy or his traitor, they're standing for righteousness. They're, they're, they're not going to go for that, that stuff that he's going, you know, sleeping with the women, sleeping with the spiritual daughters. And they're speaking out and they're not going to stand by him. That's what an enemy and a traitor is to David E. Taylor, is that you will not go along with his sinful acts. Right. I know now, but well, I didn't know then. I knew it, but I told a friend of mine whom he had reached out to, okay, he tried to talk to her, all this stuff, and, you know, she straightened him out off gate, told him off, off gate, okay? He called her a bastard and told, <laughs> told her that she was going to hell and that she needed to submit to his power. The, uh, my friend, exactly, my friend... Uh, there in uh, uh, who passes in Detroit, I introduced her to him right that night after the meeting, and he almost broke his neck trying to get to her. He bypassed everybody that was waiting to you know talk to him. Oh, please, please come in the back. Please come, come, come in the back. I want. I'm Apostle David Taylor. I want you to have my personal number. He wrote his number down, and gave it to her. And, you know, she's standing there looking at him like, I am not interested at all. Okay. You know, and she knew immediately. Now, she had an encounter with him in the spirit, astral projection. Okay. She called me the very next day, told me everything. Okay. Shut it down immediately. Okay. Immediately. And uh, she even gave a prophetic word. I wish she was on here. She gave a prophetic I word. Her, she she, come on, we'd like to have her on if she come on. I'll reach out to her tonight. I'll call her tonight. Uh, she gave a prophetic word. She said, you mark my word. She said, God is going to raise up one person and one person only. That's going to shut him down. And she said, but before God shuts him down, she said, there will be a massive amount of women that will come forth. This was the word of the Lord that she mm-hmm. prophesied. You're talking about seven years ago. Okay, and I'm thinking in my head like, oh, wow, well, I wonder who that's going to be because every other woman is afraid, you know, to uh, come forth, you know, but it's you. Okay, so anyway, this has been the story of I know quite a few women personally that he has gone after. And I told him, I said, listen, tell tell him that you are friends with me and he'll stop talking to you. As soon as the as soon as they tell him, listen, I know Kirby Gant is a rap. He moves on. He does not say anything else to them. Okay. Um, as far as these appearances, yeah. As far as these appearances are concerned, you know, with Jesus, uh, with everybody saying Jesus. Now I have talked to, and this is the part that concerns me. Um, his promotion pictures you know, shows a white Jesus, okay? But, and I don't have a problem with that, okay? Promote him or whatever. But here's the problem I have. When you talk to different people that can tell you what Jesus looked like, you have some that will say, oh my God, I've seen him after I read the book. Okay, but what does he look like? Oh, he has jet black hair. Or he has brown hair, or his hair is reddish, or his hair is this color, and he talked to me, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, mm, okay. But it's like everybody, my point is this, everybody is giving different descriptive uh, details as to what Jesus looked like. Right. Some ain't right about that. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Some ain't right about that, Vicky. Right, you're okay. right. Okay. Okay, and uh, so anyway, I just... I just, my heart goes out to all of the women, every last one of them, you know, who have been fooled, you know, by him. Instant messenger. That's what bothers me so much. I get, I bet I have 60 or 70 
uh, screenshots that he sent to women. Some I'm not counting the women that he's just kind of some you know messed with on, on social media. Try and and they didn't go for it. You know some some women they they let him have it. But he, he reaches out on social media. You do not find your spiritual father on on the instant messenger. These women. He, I know, I know. He, he he catches women that are in a weak moment, but you know, saying you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm you. You need a king, and I I want you to be my wife. That don't even that to me that says scam right away. When somebody inboxes you on Facebook and says, "Listen, you, I want to be your spiritual father, and you know, you need a king, and I want you to be my wife." You know. Yeah, it's it's and and first of all, you know, if God is going to judge and remove people off the face of the earth due to their lack of rebellion against this movement, due to, uh, due to you know, them being disrespectful, as he says, and not supporting the movement and coming against his movement. Well, you know what? That means he's going to be the first one that God is going to remove. Mm -hmm. For disorder, yep. for lies, for deceit, for, uh, for manipulation and everything else. He came to me, you know, he... Kirby, the marriages that he's destroyed. He's destroyed oh, marriages. I mean, dozens and dozens well, of Listen, marriages. I know about the marriage of a... I know... I, <laughs> there's a woman right now in Jacksonville, Florida, whose marriage that he destroyed completely. Okay? Uh, pastor's uh, Pastor... Pastor and you know both her, her and her husband were pastors destroyed their marriage completely right there in Jacksonville, Florida, and this was just a few years ago. Okay, it, it, it's just so many, and I'm like God. You know what? I thank you for turning the light on in my mind through through props. Yeah. You know, I've been around real authentic ministry. You know, all my life I'm a church baby, pastoring now. You know, I know the power of God when I see it, okay? But I also know lies and foolishness when I see it, too. And, uh, you know, he came in my inbox to tell me off, basically. Uh, uh, you know, tell me. He told me I was a faggot. Oh, and I said, if, if... But the word on the street is... <laughs> allegedly. Okay. Right. Allegedly. Right. Thank God for uh, Larry Reed with allegedly, um, <laughs> but <laughs> exactly, you know. But I'm, you know, I, I'm just glad that I'm just, you know, not gullible, you know, to, you know, and 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 not hungry and thirsty where I can just follow something that God has not even approved of. But those people, Michelle Brandon, oh, she's gonna wake up, and when she wakes up, she's gonna be the main one that's gonna tell everything gonna tell everything she's, she's yeah, gonna she tell gonna everything down. there's a lady who was just on your post last night uh who was also um one of his girls but she's married now okay. and uh i ain't gonna say her name but anyway but to all the women out there that's um yeah, I know. that's hurting yeah go ahead that's hurting you know uh this is your moment for healing yes this is your moment for complete, total healing. Yeah. Listen, no more silence of the lambs. Lamb, you can come forth now yes. and tell your story because of a lamb by yes. the name of Vicki Owen, who became oh, the wow. sacrifice for you. Okay? Uh, God is breaking that mold, you know, daily. He's breaking that mold. Okay, so I encourage every woman tonight. The Bible says there in Psalms 12, verse 8, I believe it is, uh, that the wicked strut yes. when the vow of men is exalted. What does that mean? The, wicked, the wickedness that is manifested, the things that you see from nasty men. <laughs> vile means nasty. It means foul. Okay, go look it up for those of you out there uh, that wants uh, clarity about the scripture. Go read it. When the vile of man is exalted, it says one translation says the wickedness is visible when the vileness of men is exalted by their sons. In other words, when there is no accountability, when when there's no order, 
okay, when you will not take heed to truth, okay, and when people know you are wrong, but because you say who you are, mm. they let you be who you are, and you do what you do, mm. okay, that's what the Bible says, the, the wicked strut, mm. when the vileness of men is exalted, but we mm. thank God yes. that there are people who are praying, they're not only praying for you, but they're praying for those women, um, those 60 women right there in St. Louis, St. Missouri. Louis. They're praying for those people who are still in bondage right there at JMMI. They're praying for every family that, uh, that has been interrupted, that has been disrupted, that has been torn apart mm. because of all this. Those who have went into uh, a big financial deficit, God is breathing upon you. Yes. Okay? He's breathing upon you all. Um, so my prayer tonight, uh, Vicky, if I could just read some of the scriptures tonight that God yes, um, laid upon my heart. Uh, it says in our Psalms uh, 147 verse 3, it said he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. So it's my prayer tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. that every broken heart, yes. every woman, that has been abused, every man that has lost his wife by way of this crooked and foul yes. system. Father, I declare tonight in the name of Jesus that you are blowing afresh the wind of restoration in their lives in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, that you will bind these families back together again yes. as you heal their heart. Father, remove every stench of stagnation father remove every word curse every hex every spell every incantation and father i declare god that you're raising up intercessors hallelujah from god from around this world that will pray that will stand in the gap for so many people who have been affected by what's supposed to be ministry. Father, let your will be done in the name of Jesus. Yes. There's another text that says, there's another text that says, now this is how Jesus sees you women. I'm talking to the women tonight. It says, you are precious and honored in my sight. Mm. Then he says, I love you. So to every woman tonight, know that Jesus loves you yes. and you are precious in his sight. That's Isaiah 43 and verse 4. Father, I pray tonight, O oh God, that these women will feel your embrace, yes. that they will feel the power and the touch of your love yes. as you love them. And Father, I pray tonight that they will not run, but they will embrace. Yes, God. That yes. they will embrace your healing touch tonight. In the name of Jesus. Here's another uh, text uh, that says uh, how men are supposed to treat you. So to every woman, listen, your love life, maybe you think your love life is dead because of what has happened. God is blowing afresh on, on the power for you to love again. Watch this. According to Proverbs uh, 16, 24, it says, gracious words are a honeycomb. Sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. I will tell you right now, when he comes, when the right one comes, if his words are not providing healing to your bones, then he ain't the one. Run. Mm, Run. Right. Okay? Run. And don't look back. Watch this. Jesus has a strong desire to protect you. From men who will treat you harshly, according to Proverbs 15 and 1. It says, a gentle response diverts anger, but a harsh statement incites fury. But tonight, Father, I pray, oh God, yes. hallelujah, that for the spirit of fear, yes. that it be canceled and driven out by your spirit. Father, you instruct us right there in Isaiah 61 and verse 3 that for the spirit of heaviness, we are to put on the garment of praise. So tonight, God, for every woman who, uh, who's bleeding, who's hurting, Father, I pray tonight that they will not get lost in their emotions, that they will not drown in fear, that they will not get lost in fear, but Father, they will praise their way out. 
They will praise their way out as you pull the scales off their minds. As you pull the scales off their eyes, they will praise their way out in yes. the name of Jesus. Yes, Jesus. One last verse, and I'm getting up out of here. <laughs> no, you're doing good. Keep going. Ooh, watch this. It says to ask Jesus to give you hope for his plan for you is good. As, uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope or an expected end. Father, your plans for these women is not death based upon exposure, but your plans for these women is that they will live long, prosperous lives, even according to Psalms uh, 91 verse 16. Father, you said that with long life, you will satisfy us. So, Father, I thank you now in advance for satisfying Vicky, for satisfying every woman with long life. In the name of Jesus, it is your will that they live long. And Father, every word curse that's been spoken over their lives, we send them back to the sender in the name of Jesus. And I thank you tonight for victory. I thank you tonight for victory. Yes, I thank you tonight for victory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Vicky, listen, I love you. I love you so much. I love you. I love you. There's so much more I can say about David, but let me tell you something. I ain't got enough time well, go to be said, wasted on David on. Taylor. I will come back on. Absolutely. Come I will. Week, okay. Put, put the, can okay. you come back next Wednesday? I'll be right here with bells on. Because we want Absolutely. you. You got so much more. You ministered to me tonight. I, you know, I've been giving out everything that's happening. You know, Hank's here. He's been ministering to me too. But you know what? It's just, I guess. Thank I'm, God for I'm, Hank. Uh, you know, so, I'm hearing so many women. I mean, so many women. These women, some, uh, Kirby, some of these women, they held, he's held them up for five years. For four years, for three years, one lady who she said, "No, no, this can't be right. We're gonna, he get the key. He gets the keys to our house tomorrow." Mm. You know, just we well, get it for this years. is, I'm like, Honey, but this is where we have to tomorrow. pray. But this is where you know intercessors have to stand up and pray for and send forth the anointing of the breaker to break every yoke to break every chain of bondage and deception that these women can be free. Yes. You know, not just praying a bunch of prayers you know, um, to where we are hitting and missing, but praying and getting the job done. Yes. That's the job of an intercessor. Okay? I'm an intercessor. There are so many folks on here tonight that are intercessors, and they are charged to pray, Praise and they have God. been praying, which is why you are making leeway in the spirit. You yes. understand? And I pray tonight for your safety, yes. both in spirit and in natural. I cover your children. Yes. We come against every spirit of backlash and retaliation. Yes. We cancel the plans of hell concerning you. Thank God. Even as you continue to go forth, that you will go forth with such great stride. Hallelujah. Oh. And may the angels of the Lord be encamped around you daily. Yes. Amen. Amen. I love you. Love you so much. Now, listen, I know Valentine's is coming up. I made a reservations for one. <laughs> this I got. I made my reservations for one. Is not maybe next Valentine's, but I gotta make. I'm going to Valentine's by myself. I know that's right. Go ahead, celebrate yourself. That's right. All right. That's well, we right. Absolutely. Next Wednesday, okay? I love it too. All right. Now, okay. Listen, God bless. Let me say where your church is. So get, get a plug for your church. There might be somebody in that's watching that may be in your area. Okay, absolutely. Um, I pastor um, Influencers Church um, right here in the beautiful city of Bradenton, Florida, 1938 Manatee Avenue East. Um, right, services are, yeah, that's right, Bradenton, right outside of Tampa. Um, the best beaches in the world, okay? Um, uh, uh, Sunday a.m., we start at 10 o'clock a.m., Tuesday nights. Uh, we go into intercession and we pray until there's breakthrough. Uh, right. Thursday night is Bible class. Thursday night Bible class is 7 p.m. So listen, you guys should come. We're growing by leaps and bounds. This is a work that I recently took over almost two years ago. Um, my spiritual mother retired um, after 45 years of ministry. Wow. Uh, she chose wow. me to be. Yeah, she chose me to be her successor. Wow. To my surprise, and um, just recently, just a few weeks ago. Um, uh, with the leading of the Lord, uh, we changed the name of the church. So, hey, uh, God like is doing a new thing, but 
Yeah, me too. I love it. You know, this is what God gave me. So, yeah. yeah. We love you. Yeah, so we pray for us. Okay? Absolutely. Okay. All right. God, God bless. Lord, God bless. God bless. Okay. All right. Guess who's here? There's Hank. There's Hank. Bless Hank, the Hank Lord. is here. So you got a word, Hank? What's yes. going on? Yes. Well, first of all, you probably all noticed, I shaved. <laughs> he <laughs> shaved. Yeah, he looks younger, don't he? So well, handsome. My wife's been gone for a few days, and so I just let it go. But she don't like a hairy face, so I had to shave. Does she and like hair? Oh, do you like hairy well, legs? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't like hairy legs. No. I keep my legs shaved, and he keeps his face shaved. That's the agreement. Yeah, that's right. She keeps her legs shaved, and I keep my face shaved. <laughs> I no, I tell you what, I had to surprise her. I went out to feed the cats this morning out to the barn, and uh, I took my my uh, shears out there and just sheared my face real good. Then I come in and use a razor blade. <laughs> Okay, it. well, anyway, I was asking the Lord today about what is this about many are called, but few are chosen. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever think about that? Yeah, that's true. Wow. Yeah. You've got to hear this. You all just take it for what it is, but this is awesome. I'm going to read it. It's just going to take a few minutes, but listen, I really believe with all of my heart, I can really see the difference now between those that are called and those are chosen. Yeah. You've got to hear this. It's just going to take a couple of minutes. And uh, I really believe, as don't forget, you all keep sharing. Share, share, share. And we are exposing David E. Taylor. Yes. The cult leader of JMMI out of Detroit, Michigan. Hallelujah. And God is doing it every through day. his people. Every day. Every day. Yeah. It's awesome. God it's, is on the move. It, he is. God it's is so awesome. Move. I leave and come back, and I mean, every time I leave and come back, Vicky's got a new word, and somebody's coming on, and it's just awesome about what's going on. Mm -hmm. But listen at this now. For many are called, but few are chosen. To answer, we must understand what Jesus means here by call and choose. The word call runs through the parable. In the Greek text, the servants are said to call those who had been called to feast, Matthew 22, 3. The Jewish invitees are the called ones, Matthew 22, 4 through 8. The servants are then commanded to call the Gentiles, 22 through 9. The word translated called in verse 14 belongs to the same word family as the tra that translated called in verses 3, 4, 8, mm. and 9. This pattern helps us understand the nature of the call in this parable. It is the summons or invitation of God through his servants. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the presence of God. I'll tell you, this is absolutely awesome. The prophets in the Old Testament, ministers in the New. This call bids hearers to repent and believe the good news the servants proclaim. Mm. It is possible to refuse. Did you hear that? Yes. It is possible to refuse. As many Jews did, Jesus teaches that those who refuse the call mm. are culpable for refusing it. But it is also possible to respond to this call in a non-saving way. The man without the wedding garment in 22 and 12 presumably responded mm. to the tent invitation. But his lack of the garment proves he doesn't belong at the feast. Mm. And he is justly banished. What is the wedding garment? It likely pictures the gift of salvation freely offered in the gospel. Only those who receive this gift will be seated at the wedding banquet of the Lamb at the consummation of all things. Now listen, that was the call. Now listen to the chosen. Who are they who sincerely respond to the call and receive Christ in faith? Jesus calls them the chosen. Or, as the Greek word may be translated, the elect. These all are whom the Father has chosen in Christ from before. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! See, he knew before he was ever born. Isn't that awesome? I, I love to hear what one man said. He said, our names was put in the Lamb's Book of Life before we were ever even born. Wow, 
I heard a man that was put in prison, an awesome man of God, that was put in prison because he took some flack back when the savings and loans went down. I won't mention his name, but he's a wonderful man of God. And he was, it was pouring down rain when he was there on the prison campus. And he just cried out and he said, Lord, he said, you know, I chose you. Why did you put me here like that? And he said, God spoke to him so clearly. And he said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Isn't that awesome? I just love this. So the Father has chosen them in Christ from before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Ephesians 1 and 4. Only these chosen ones will constitute the company of the redeemed when Christ returns in glory. God's eternal choice ensures they will respond sincerely to the call. See, his choice to make us his chosen one because he knew we were going to respond to the call. Yes. But there's those that just was called that were not chosen. And I believe these are they, like David Taylor, this cult leader. He was called, but he wasn't chosen because God knew him from the beginning that he wouldn't be true, he wouldn't be faithful, that he would try to uh, rape the people of God over the coals. But God's bringing him forth in Jesus' name. So since the New Testament elsewhere joins calling with election, 2 Timothy 1 through 9 and Romans 8 and 30, what does Jesus mean when he says, there are some who are called but not chosen? The external call goes to all people, but only the elect will experience the internal call. Hallelujah. That's a powerful word. Woo, isn't it good to know we're called tonight? But we're not only called, but we're chosen because we were, ch were chosen from the foundation of the earth. You can use Hallelujah. anything, Lord. You can use, use me. me. Oh, if you can use anything, You can anything, use Lord. anything, Lord. Lord. You, you can, can use, use me. me. Take my hand, Lord. Take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord. Speak through me. I know you can sing it, but you start crying. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. Come on, try to sing with me. Come on. If you can use anything. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. Listen, I'm, I'm messing up. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. Take my hand, Lord. Take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord. Speak through me, Lord. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. Come on, let's go higher. so long I didn't I was oh, messing up on it but you know what I'm so thankful uh, for all of you that join in we got up to like 450 on here tonight I'm so thankful we're sounding the alarm please share this I'm not gonna sing I will do I just want you tomorrow night okay and yes. and I'll probably do because of who you are tomorrow night also I, I'm not gonna do uh, I'm not gonna sing those tonight but tomorrow night because we're a little bit long so tomorrow night I'll do um, I just want you and I'll do because of who you are and we just love you guys so much we're continuing to sound the alarm when we get on here every night, please share. We have got to help women. There are women right now that don't even know about yes. this yet. They don't know. They're, they're caught in that. It's, I call it the wicked web. And I've asked the Lord so many times, why was I caught in this wicked web? Why was I caught in this wicked web? I just went there to sing. I went there to sing last August, to, as to what I do, and I got caught up in it. Yes. And I know for such a time as this, because I'm not afraid. I'm bold. I'm strong. I'm getting stronger every day. We are, the enemy is defeated. Yes, the he enemy, is. I continue to, you say, Vicki, I don't seem defeated. Yes, he's defeated. We speak, your life follows Amen. your words. 
and we will be victorious. Hank, why don't you Amen. say a Latin, just a prayer real quick, yes. and we'll get off of here, okay? Lord, we thank you, Father, for a wonderful evening once again to come to you and expose this cult with David E. Taylor and JMMI up there in Detroit, Michigan. But Father God, you're touching, you're feeding your people, hallelujah. You're setting free those that are in bondage, hallelujah. And we give you glory and honor and praise. We just want you to know how much we appreciate you, Jesus. How much we love you. How much we care for you, Father. Thank you for never leaving us or forsaking us. Hallelujah. So Bless so these people. I have hope. Hallelujah. When trouble comes my way. Yes. song but I, an old brother years ago we sing that at our church and i just love it okay good night tell everybody good night good night love right. you bless the tomorrow lord night. tomorrow night tomorrow night seven o'clock